Welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Last time, we entered and beat the Water Temple, and now we're going to be exiting it to of course meet the Sage, who is probably obvious at this point. It's, you know, a Water Temple. Who else do we know that is associated with water besides King Zora? Princess Ruto. It makes sense. Again though, we're going to be getting a medallion from her, but it's going to be a bit weird considering the way the medallion looks. I talked about before how the medallion from Saria had four kind of fan turbines on it, implying that the temple was wind-based. This one kind of looks like a snowflake, as you can see, that she's standing on, which kind of makes you think that this temple was going to be ice-based originally. And it was, but they just like... I guess took the ice assets and moved it to the ice cavern instead. Apparently Link's relationships with these people that, you know, end up becoming sages are ended once they become sages because they say stuff like they have to stay within the chamber of sages to protect Hyrule or something like that. And so rather than having a weird fish wife, we instead get the water medallion. And this one actually matches my outfit. One thing that I didn't mention about the medallions is that they don't really serve a purpose. They're more so proof that you've beaten a temple and awakened a sage. The, uh, the spiritual stones had a purpose. They, and they let you enter the door of time. These just kind of are tokens or tickets. Like when you go to Chuck E. Cheese, they're proof that you beat Skee-Ball. Now that we've beat the water temple, the water level will rise, although that weird crystal thing that we needed to hit to enter the temple doesn't rise. I think that's actually changed in the 3DS version, it'll actually go up as the surface of the water rises. Like after beating the forest temple, we have a conversation with someone. Forest temple it was the Deku Tree Sprout, and now we talk to Sheik. Apparently Princess Ruto helped us when it came to beating the water temple although that's not actually true I'm pretty sure I could have gotten through it on my own she was there for one room where she told us hey this area can change the water level and then I didn't even let her finish her dialogue when it came to facing the boss sadly even though the water level has risen back to what it was and the curse has broken on Lake Hylia, and it should break on Zora's domain too, like with the frozen stuff. Zora's domain isn't actually gonna thaw out. The only Zoras there are gonna be the king and the shopkeep, which kinda sucks because I like the Zoras. Eh, that was a pretty good dive. I've seen better. 8 out of 10. Now that we've finished the temple and it's morning time, we actually want to take out our arrows and stand on this little panel over here. We need to shoot an arrow into the morning sun. That's what the little thing in front of us tells us if we check it, to shoot into the morning sun. But it's pretty picky. You need to shoot the sun as it's rising. If you shoot it uh, any other time of day, it's pretty much gonna not count. So you need to play the sun song a couple of times in order to get it back to sunrise so that you shoot an arrow at it and you get the fire arrows. It is probably possible to get the fire arrows a bit earlier if you shoot into the morning light and then erect a scarecrow right there where Navi turned green. And then if you use the long shot, you could probably get up to it, but that would involve entering and leaving the temple, which I do not like. So I would rather wait until the temple is over to actually do that. We are, however, going to use the scarecrow to get something else. In this area, there is a little plot, or whatever you want to call it, soft soil for magic beans. And we could create a, a platform that will take us up to the roof of the, uh, the lakeside laboratory. But instead of doing that, I'm going to use a scarecrow song to erect a scarecrow at the roof of the laboratory, and instead long shot to it. It's a way that doesn't involve going back in time to plant seeds and then coming back as an adult to get the, you know, the reward for it. 
At least, I think that's what you use the magic bean for in this area. I honestly haven't used it at all here, so... There's a lot of places where I haven't used the magic beans. Now that we're up here, we need to climb this ladder. And there are some bird enemies. I think they're called like Gways or something like that. They're in Lon Lon Ranch at night. At least as a child, they are. But up here, we get a piece of heart. Now that we're done with that, I'm going to coolly backflip off of this area and take a little bit of damage. Um, since the next area that we're going to be going to doesn't have an ocarina song yet, we are going to be getting a warp song, but we don't have it right now. We need to call Epona. It's an area that we're a bit familiar with. We've heard the music from it a couple of times, but uh, we haven't actually gone in and explored a lot of it. We are going past the Gerudo Valley into the Thieves' Hideout, which is basically like a big fortress where all the Gerudo hang out. Before, I used Epona to jump the gap where the bridge used to be, but actually there is an alternate way to get across that big gap. If you use the hookshot and target onto like the, the sort of sign above where it is, there's a hookshot target looking thing above or yeah above where the bridge is you can actually hookshot across making it a bit faster and a bit easier because honestly it's a bit finicky I keep saying a bit it's finicky when it comes to using Epona to get across although we will need Epona coming up not really in this part but we will need Epona when going into the Gerudo's fortress so we're gonna take her with us anyway and sadly, we don't get to hear the awesome music that is the Gerudo Desert music. So I'm going to make it daytime so that we can hear the greatness that is the music. Although first, there's a sculpture all around here. I don't notice it until after I've played the Sun Song, so I'm going to play it a second time so I can actually get the sculpture and then, you know, actually play it again so that we can hear the music. It's a bit of a process, honestly, I should have done something about that, but who cares? This part is way shorter than the last part. I'm allowed to take a breather, alright? Plus, we actually get to see how the Sculptula appears. It just kind of grows into view. That's pretty much it. Okay, now that we've gotten that, Sun Song one more time to make it daytime so we can hear the amazing music and then actually enter the Gerudo Fortress hideout thing. I didn't talk about this before, but there are actually more masks than the Mask of Truth that Young Link can get, and two of them are Goron and Zora masks. The last one is a Gerudo mask, which, you know, all the masks, they're, well, those three specifically, the Zora, Goron, and Gerudo, they're just for flavor text. They don't really do anything like the Mask of Truth, but uh, it's interesting that they're there. This is a stealth section. We need to be very sneaky, although you can be pretty sword happy when it comes to this area. If they're not looking at you, you can get up behind them and slash at them pretty easily. Although I'm a pretty pacifist kind of guy. I'm not going to take out a bunch of them. In fact, I'm just going to be going straight for the... Uh, the main goal which is saving all of these carpenters we talked to the head carpenter who was at the bridge before we gave him the saw in order to get the big Oron sword in the trading side quest his apprentices are all locked up here they wanted to join the gerudo even they're an all-female race or something like that and they got captured and now we have to deal with a guard here that spin attack that she does, if she hits you with it, you will be thrown in jail. Obviously, you'll also take damage. But just a warning, getting caught isn't the only way to go to jail in this area. Getting hit by that spin attack also does a trick. Although, they do leave themselves open after doing it, so getting a jump attack in with the Bagoran sword will take them out pretty quickly. These four carpenters that are captured here, I think in like the German version or something like that, they were actually named after the Beatles. Also in the German version, when you wear the Keaton mask and talk to Princess Zelda, 
because after uh after she gives you the letter and you open up the way to uh death mountain and the guard tells you hey the happy mass shop just opened you can actually sneak back into the castle and talk to zelda obviously before she uh runs away with impa on the horse but if you talk to her while wearing the keaton mask she'll say something like oh it's one of those pocket monsters which, you know, Pocket Monsters is like the name for Pokemon or something. Again, I think that's only in the German version. In this version, she's like, oh, what a cute mask or something like that. I think I have said this before, but you don't specifically need the long shot or the bow and arrow in order to get through here. You could stun them with the hook shot, which actually doesn't last very long. But if you get up to them and then slash them with your sword, they'll be knocked down as if they got hit with an arrow. Which... You know, they're knocked down for quite a while after that, I think, until you actually exit and re-enter the area, so that's a method, but honestly, using the hook shot is more convenient. Um, the long shot, rather. Having the long shot, which requires having the bow and arrow. What I'm trying to say is, do this after you do the water temple. Another Gerudo appears. Obviously, we need to kill her. You, you don't actually kill them, they kind of jump out of the area afterwards my strategy is basically what i said before wait for them to do a spin attack and then do a jump attack to them because after they do the spin attack they're kind of left wide open so two well not two but doing two jump attacks and then a stab which is equivalent to five hits from the bigoran sword ought to do them in and they always drop keys for you to save the carpenters with he just called me a cute kid I am not comfortable with this guy. And this is what I was talking about last time. Link gets a lot of girls, and now he gets guys, even though he hasn't, you know, again, blank slate, even though I made an argument against him being a blank slate last time. Anyway, we saved two of the carpenters, two more to go. Although there is some extra stuff in this fortress that we can do besides saving the carpenters kind of trying to hint at the fact that we're not going to be done with the fortress after we're finished saving these carpenters. This room you could just hook shot onto the wooden plank at the ceiling to get across or you could you know kill the Gerudo but this is faster so I'm going to do it this way and also it involves less you know killing of actual humans. Did I mention that the Gerudos don't have pointy ears? I don't think I did but they don't have like pointy ears like Hylians, they have regular normal person ears, including Ganondorf, although I think in Twilight Princess, this is like, it's the same Ganondorf as in here, and his ears become pointed in that one, so it kind of throws a wrench in the whole thing. I turn it to nighttime because there is actually a gold skull chill here. Don't worry though, after I get this, I'm going to turn it back into daytime so we can hear the amazing music. This is one of those areas where day and night don't switch normally, like just waiting around won't switch it. So when you play the sun song, rather than the sun just coming up, you need to, well, it kind of makes you re-enter the area. I'm kind of wandering about because there's an item that we can get here using the scarecrow song. Navi actually flies out towards the area, but I fell too far down, so we're going to be coming back for that in a little bit. For now, we're just going to save the rest of the carpenters. And I'm waiting here because there's actually a Gerudo that's going to come up. And we need to shoot her in the face in order to knock her down. There she is. Well, I guess I'm not going to shoot her in the face. That was clearly the spine. She should clearly be dead. But whatever. This is like rated E for everyone. This one, I think, is actually supposed to be the last carpenter you save, considering that there's no other entrance or exit for this area but it doesn't really matter we're gonna end up saving them all anyway so i might as well do it in the wrong order just like i'm doing with the temples now if you saw last part you'd know that enemies with sword and shield or kind of agile enemies enemies that can defend and such they are very prone to being destroyed by the goron sword the example being Dark Link. If you just stab at her a bunch of times, and stabbing with the Bigoron Sword is actually really fast and it moves you 
forward pretty quickly too. If you just keep stabbing, it'll penetrate her defenses and you'll be able to get a few hits in. Of course, if you're using the Master Sword, it's not going to be that easy. You can also kind of use the hook shot. If you press the button twice in rapid succession, basically you'll shoot it out and then instantly pull it back towards you. After that's done, they backflip away from you, I think, and then they'll get ready to do one of their spin attacks. You can actually use that to your advantage, so they do the spin attack, but they'll be left wide open and then you could hit them afterwards. There is one last strategy that I'll be showing off when we get to the last of the carpenters to save. Who is right in here? This one probably should have come earlier considering that, you know, there's two exits in this room. There's the one in front of us and the one we just came through. The carpenters all have different hairstyles except for two of them that have the same hairstyle. Doesn't really mean anything in the long run, but whatever. It's nice to know that they have something distinct between them, that being their hairstyles. And for this last Gerudo, I'm going to employ a different strategy. Instead, I'm going to rapid fire arrows because they just don't know what to do if you keep doing that. They will die very quickly. I, I say die, they'll, they'll get, they'll drop the key very quickly. I didn't get caught, but if you do get caught, they'll throw you in a room that only really has a window, but at the top of the window is something made of wood, I guess, to close the window. If you hookshot to it, you'll basically be able to get out of the cell that they put you in. Interestingly enough, they don't take your items at all, they just leave you with everything you have equipped, which makes me question why Link even puts his hands up, because he does put his hands up when they find him. He could just kind of, you know, wreck them all. A spin attack from the Goron Sword ought to do it. This is kind of the leader of the Gerudo right now. Apparently, Naburu put this lady in charge. And Naburu has been exalted, apparently. She actually hasn't been seen in a long time. Since she's gone, this lady here is recognizing our talents. We pretty much infiltrated the fortress without a hitch. So we get the Gerudo's membership card. Now we can just roam around and do whatever we want. We can no longer get caught for roaming around, so we can access a couple of mini games. There are actually some different Gerudo. They wear different clothing. Instead of wearing the purple and such, they wear white. Those are like not fighters, they instead handle different things like minigames and such. And if you talk to them, you can play minigames. However, if you talk to them without having the membership card, you'll instead get caught if you walk into their line of sight. Now that we're back here, I can actually play the Scarecrow song, even though Navi won't appear to show that there is a Scarecrow around here. And by playing it, we obviously erect a Scarecrow. You can hookshot pretty you know, well onto it. Like, I can barely see where the scarecrow is, but you can hookshot onto its head, and that'll be good enough. While up here, there's a giant treasure chest, and if you open it, well, the prize is a piece of heart. What else was it gonna be? I suppose it could have been rupees, but usually there isn't a long animation for rupees. It's just you open the chest by kicking it and take out whatever the contents are. The reason that I brought Epona to this place is actually coming up pretty soon. We are going to ride her to another archery minigame, this one being a lot more difficult than the last in my opinion, but we're not going to be doing it this part. It's what we're going to be doing in the next part. So I'll just show where it is. It's not very far, it's way up on those like all the way on the right side of the map, those two sort of eyes, I guess, that's what they look like to me. It's the only minigame, well, not the only minigame, the only shooting minigame that requires Epona, so we'll do it next time.